scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Sometimes our environments are too noisy to hear God. Sometimes our environments are too distracted to understand the cause for our lives. There is power in shutting down and just being away the bible says be still and you will know there is a kind of knowledge that only comes when you are still not just be still and you will hear be still and you will know meditation number two very quickly we're piecing together the faith equation now number two prayer now i did observe yesterday that this when it has to do with the subject of warfare deliverance it has to do with warding of the forces of darkness and then issues of power and grace. We place emphasis and premium on prayer. But then when it comes to where we read yesterday, we start from 22 and down to 24, but 24 is the verse of emphasis. The Bible says, um, how did Jesus put it now? He said, verily, verily, please give it to us. Mark chapter 11, we'll start from verse 22 down to 24. Jesus answering them said, have faith in God, the faith of God. Next verse. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall say to this mountain, be removed from hence, be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. The Bible declares that he shall have whatsoever he saith. The rule is in verse 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when, not if, when, when you pray, believe that thou receivest them, and ye shall have them why do you need to pray there are many reasons why we pray but prayer is the only authorized platform that gives us an opportunity to make petitions and to make requests before the lord the bible says be anxious for nothing it says but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving make your request known don't assume god knows it make your request known hallelujah and so prayer is a very vital part of the faith equation. Lord, I desire you to arise. I desire you to move in this area. Jesus was teaching us how to pray. And in his lecture on prayer, he says, When you pray, pray thus. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, he said. Thy will be done. And then he says, give us this day. This is request now. Our daily bread give us today you mention the day and you mention what you desire today our daily bread praise the name of the lord prayer is very powerful prayer also plays a role in building our faith the bible says building our faith our most holy faith even as we pray in the holy ghost so prayer is one of the faith equations number three confession the power of confession it comes from 
the Hebrew word homologio, that means repeat as you have heard. It comes from the word echo, repeat as you have heard. Are we together now? To confess means to declare, to verbalize in agreement that which God has said. Again, it means to, to verbalize in agreement what God has said. It's not just to merely talk. That means if you are speaking and what you are saying is not what God said. You are just talking but you are not confessing. Confession has to be in agreement with what God has said. If you are complaining, you are verbalizing something. That's not confession. If you are arguing, the Bible says do everything without complaining nor argument. All of them require speech. They require utterance. They require speaking. But the difference is that confession the best description of confession is what happened to Ezekiel in chapter 37. Son of man, can these bones live? He said, only thou knowest. And then he says, prophesy. Declare as you have heard. And he says, I prophesied as I was commanded, not as I desired, as I was commanded. I prophesied as I was commanded. I prophesied as I was commanded. So the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so not just think so let the blessed of the lord say so let the healed of the lord say so let the lifted of the lord say so let the prosperous of the lord say so let the anointed of the lord say so let the victorious of the lord say so let the favored of the lord say so confession Psalm 107 and verse 2. Please give it to us. Psalm 107 and verse 2. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Whom the Lord had redeemed already from the hand of the enemy. They have been redeemed already. But they have to say so to walk in the reality of that redemption. So I declare. In the name of Jesus Christ, I am the head and not the tail. I am confessing. Why? Because he said so. In the name of Jesus, Gentiles come to my light. They are kings to the brightness of my rising. For my shame I receive double. Where I've been deserted so that no man walks through me. I become an ex a eternal excellency. A joy of many generations. I arise and I shine for my light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. These are not mere words. I am giving life to that which was finished in Christ. I am activating it. You see, brothers and sisters, please look up. This kingdom was designed to be voice activated. This is powerful. Genesis 1 verse 1, the Bible says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2 says, Now, the earth was dark, it was void, it was formless. And the Spirit of God hovered around the face of the waters. You would think just because of the presence of the Holy Spirit, creation should happen. Nothing happened. Until we get to verse 3. And Elohim said, Light be. Light be. Elohim said, Light be. And the Bible says, And there was light. Everything he said, he saw. Everything he said, he saw. When he created Adam in his image and his likeness, the Bible says, And whatsoever things Adam called them, that was the name thereof. That means it is unto you the way you call it. If you call it trouble, it must obey what you have said. If you call it disappointment, it must be for you as you have said. Is it not in your Bible that when men say there is a casting down, it tells you immediately that you are not an ordinary person. It, when men say there is a casting down, your report. Let me tell you this. A lie is not an incorrect statement alone. A lie is anything God did not say. The standard definition of a lie is anything God did not say. Not just a statement that is incorrect. Because the subject of truth has to be based on a reference. Those who are lawyers and those who are of the judicial system will tell you. You cannot arbitrarily say something is true or is not true. There has to be a reference. Is that true? Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. That means reference every other thing based on me. 
the word of God, the logos of God. So whatever God did not say, oh, let God be true, the Bible says, and every other man, it didn't say, and every other man evil, every other man a liar. So circumstances, Paul was speaking and he said, there is as it were many voices in the earth and none of them is without significance. Your circumstances have a voice. Your limitations have a voice. Your yesterday has a voice. Are we together now? And all these voices continue to speak and make noise. You are going to have to choose you this day. Not just who you will serve, but what voice you would hear. The first thing that led to the fall of man was exposing himself to a voice that God did not recommend. What the Bible says in Genesis 3, when you begin to read from verse 8, it says, and God came. They had the voice of God walking in the cool of the day. The original Hebrew rendition is they had the talking spirit walking in the cool of the day. And he says, Adam, where art thou? And Adam said, I heard your voice, but I hid because I was naked. The next question, who told you you have exposed yourself to an influence that is a lie listen we live in times where you must be very intentional about the voice that frames your understanding please hear me let me repeat myself it is important if you desire to walk in victory you desire to see the reality of the victory that is in the Christ manifest in your life your ministry your finances every aspect of your life you must be very intentional as to what voice you expose yourself to because the voice you expose yourself to you have given authorization to to shape your belief system and the Bible says, as he thinketh in his heart, interchange for mind. He didn't say, so he will become. So is he. Already. I can predict your future by the influence you have submitted yourself to. I don't have to be a prophet. I just need to see what is building your mind. What is building your understanding. And I can guarantee with digital precision that this is the kind of future you will have. For my Bible says, he that walks with the wise, he does not have to be wise, just walk with the wise. It says, he that walks with the wise will be wise himself, but a companion of fools, no matter how well-meaning, shall be destroyed. Is God blessing us this morning? We are dealing with confession, the power of confession. Two more scriptures, Isaiah 43 and verse 26. Isaiah 43 Please give it to us, help us, media, and verse 26. Read with me if you can see it projected. I pray you are able to see it. If you are, then let's read together. Ready? Read. Put me in remembrance, he says. Let us plead together. Then he says, declare thou that thou mightest be justified. Don't hope you will be justified. Declare thou. What have I told you that is responsible? On what basis should I lift you? On what basis should I honor you? On what basis should your church grow? Oh, I'm a well-meaning believer. That's a lie because that's not the basis for growth. Everything you have is routed through the office of the Christ. When you dislodge him from the equation, you have no basis for receiving anything. You must plead your case, declare thou. In Isaiah chapter 38, don't turn there, just right. Prophet Isaiah comes to Hezekiah and says, Yes, I bring you a word from the Lord. Set your house in order, you will not recover from this sickness. Hezekiah said, I respect you, I respect your office. You have a nice day. The Bible says he turned his face to the wall and pleaded his case. There is a judicial system in this universe and you must understand the art of spiritual legislation. You must know how to stand and plead your case in destiny otherwise you will fail you will keep complaining while you fail believe me there are many believers who allow things to just happen no there is a judicial system on what basis should i extend your life and hezekiah said remember there is a book in heaven called the book of remembrance lord is this how you reward those who diligently walk with you 
did you not say I have the power to choose life? Where is it in the archives of heaven that I chose death? And God said, ah, 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 this man is putting pressure on my integrity. Yes, Isaiah, go back. Forget about your ego. Go back. Even though I am the Lord that changed not, I respect and exalt myself above my word. Can I tell you this? The highest dimension of prophecy is the prophecy of scripture. That no matter what is said or not said, you can take the prophecy of scripture and stand with spiritual understanding. Please hear me. You will never get anything by default in this life. Aside from that which comes based on the law of time and chance. If you must be intentional about producing results, you must know how to plead your case. Oh God, what would you give me seeing that I go childless? All right, here is someone from my house. At least let me have a seat. And he said, no. Abraham, you will have your own child. Abraham believed God and the Bible says it was credited unto him for righteousness. And so we like faithful Abraham, we believe God. We believe God. Someone shout, I believe God. One more time, shout it, I believe God. So when you go to God, you don't pray some of these sympathetic but destructive prayers. Lord, is this how you are going to allow my life? You mean you are in heaven, you have the eyes that see and you are watching me like this. It looks, that's just, of course, God is merciful and he's loving. But let me tell you sincerely, if it's a parliament of heaven, you must know how to stand. Satan, on what basis are you attacking my family? The Bible declares that I will serve the Lord and he will bless me. I am a faithful worker in this ministry. And Lord, I stand, I lift my service like my, my badge, my authorization for safety and the blessing. This is how to plead your cause. Hallelujah. In one minute while you are seated, I'd like you to open your mouth and begin to declare everything you know the word of God has said over you. Don't say this is some childish thing. Many people have ignored this principle to the detriment of their life, their success, and their destiny. Lift your voice and please pray. Confession. Present your case before the God of the Bible. Very quickly, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now, the fourth, the fourth step is your action of obedience. Not just mere action. Your action of obedience. This is the zenith of your manifesting faith. Your action of obedience. All of those support systems build your conviction to the point where you are ready to act. Your action of obedience. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. Let me quote it quickly for time's sake. The Bible says, And it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do, to observe and to do, to observe and to do, not just to see and to be aware, to observe and to do all that I command you this day, uh -huh, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. Verse 2 says, And all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake you the condition if thou will hearken to the voice of the lord to observe and to do faith is not just what saying what god has said faith is doing what god has said are we together faith is doing what god has said joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 popular scripture joshua was a timid young man who was now receiving such responsibility he was afraid god had to encourage him to say look moses my servant is dead now the mantle is upon you you're going to lead these people onward and he was so afraid he knew they were stiff-necked people he knew that the cities that before them that were before them were very terrible and great cities and god gave him a formula that is applicable unto us the book of the lord this book of the lord shall not depart from out of your mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night to the end that thou mayest observe to do again we see that repeated observe to do 
all that is written therein for when you do you will make your ways prosperous and you will have good success john 13 and verse 17 jesus said something very instructive while building and mentoring the disciples who would later become the apostles of the lamb is projected please let's read together ready one to read if ye know these things happy are ye if you do them it's not enough to know you must obtain grace to do grace to do the bible says having the readiness to judge all disobedience only when your obedience is complete praise the name of the lord you must do you must do there are conditions behind every promise that we desire to walk into you must find out what the condition is obtain grace from god in prayer and do and do and do hallelujah two more and then we're done for this morning number five am i right the fifth key to the faith equation is found in philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 is called thanksgiving 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 is a deep and profound mystery be anxious this version says careful it's not an accurate rendition the real word there is to be anxious for nothing it says but in everything by prayer and then supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto god with thanksgiving father thank you why do you thank him because you believe you believe that he has done it the bible declares that when we pray this is the confidence that we have that when we pray he hears us god is not an idol when we pray he hears us so we thank him thank you jesus because i know this project is done thank you jesus because i received by faith this new level of grace this new level of unction thank you jesus because i'm walking in this favor are we together praise the name of the lord can you in one minute whilst you're seated just say thank you jesus not just for the things past not just for the things past but the things that he's bringing thank you jesus is someone saying thank you don't just thank him for what you have seen thank you jesus because the months that follow are months of favor and grace with thanksgiving keep saying thank you you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor i just want to say thank Wanna say thank you so in my life in my life be glorified be glorified Let me tell you this thanksgiving is truly powerful replace a life of complaining and grumbling with thanksgiving lord i may not see the things you are doing but thank you thank you because this is the day the lord has made i don't need to understand the day i just need to find out who made it if i know who made the day i can tell whether my interest was represented in that day or not the Lord, the one who so jealously loves me, made the day. So I trust that my interest was represented in this day. 
and I walk through the day with thanksgiving and expectation. So I'm not surprised when I'm favored. The Lord made the day. I'm not surprised when I'm lifted. The Lord made the day. I'm not surprised when doors open for me. The Lord made the day. You walk with that expectation and continue to program very supernatural results in your life. Finally, the last key to the faith equation is called patience. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12. Interestingly, every time you read the Bible, especially the ministry of Jesus, there are times when you will see that certain miracles happen immediately. The Bible says immediately these happen. Immediately these happen. But there are times that the Bible would tell us like it happened in Mark 11, that when he caused the fig tree, he had did everything right, yet nothing happened at that instance. Yet he didn't stand there wondering and say, Father, why embarrass me this much? No. He left. He returned the next day and the tree had withered. So it is not unusual for time and process to be part of our equation of faith. The Bible says, And be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise or inherit the promise. There are times it will require patience. No matter how healthy a woman is, no matter how medically and physically sound she is, she's not going to take in in one day and the child suddenly grows in one day and within 24 hours. Now God can do all things. Are we together now? But even the prophets, when they come speaking by God, they say, according to the time of life. There are things that happen according to the time of life. If you give birth to a child, and as soon as the child is out in five minutes, he says, Mommy, how are you? Good to see you. Daddy, how is everything? Where can I eat, please? I'm, I'm really hungry. You don't know what it means to be. Now, you are going to run away from your own blessing. There are times that God allows the sequence of process to follow certain manifestations. And that happens for various reasons. Number one, because human beings usually misuse anything they are not built and educated to maintain. You have to understand why many times God allows process. Someone who has never made a million naira, never made 500,000, never had any significant level of the anointing no matter what kind of impartation you receive there are certain levels God will limit by himself for your own benefit there are certain levels of anointing that will never come on you just like that you can't stand the attacks that follow that anointing so as an act of his mercy he will gradually build you into that grace so that you will sustain the stamina to both maintain it there are anointings that when you carry it will change you Literally, your, your, it will change you physically, change your appetites, change everything about you. And that level of sudden change, you are not even ready for it. Praise the Lord. So not every manifestation of process is demonic. God is a God of speed, but he does not rush people. We need patience. A young man who is not used to managing resources, managing people, will not overnight become a leader. Over The Bible says he gave the parable of the talents. He gave one five talents, two talents, one talent. The same Lord. He says he gave them according to their several abilities. That means he had watched them for a while. He watched their belief systems. He watched their level of growth. And that informed how he gave them those talents. At the end of that story, we see that he was right. The one with the five talents had his own challenge to face. His challenge would be pride and complacency. After all, I have the highest of the talents. Yet he was diligent and he engaged those talents. It, it took an extra level of focus. The one with two talents had his own challenges to fight. Jealousy and bitter envy because there was someone above him. The ability to have stayed focused and to produce. The one with the one talent, you see why he got only one. It tells you it was even just mercy that gave him that one. Because at the end of the story, you see that the giver was right. 
he was already a bitter person. He was already a failure from beginning. He said, I know you. You are a hard man. You like reaping where you did not sow. So I thought instead of wasting your time, let me bury it. You bury seeds, not talents. You multiply talents and you sow seeds. He took a talent and he was doing what seeds should do. Are we blessed? You need patience. Let me tell you this. I submit to us that impatience can cheat. Every time you are not patient, you will give birth to the Ishmael that will fight you. Listen to this. Oh, Abraham and Sarah, every time you become impatient, prepare. Ishmael is coming that will cause you trouble for the rest of your life. You must be patient so that you will not give birth to what will become your unbecoming. There are many people today, you see, if God says, I'm going to give you one million next week, Satan will give you 200 naira now, 200,000 right now. You say, why wait for one million of next week? I can give you 200,000 cash. And you will think and say next week, a bed in hand, they say, is what, uh, I can't remember what that thing is, what two or five in the bush. No. Follow them who through faith. Is that not what Satan, Satan is a mass, you see, Satan is a businessman. He knows how to negotiate. From the instance, Jesus had not even started his ministry. He waited patiently for the son of the living God to fast for 40 days. And here he came. Jesus, let's talk. First, you are hungry. Turn this stone into bread. And he said, it is written. Then he said, all right, I know. Let me take you to an exceeding high mountain. You just fall down. Is it not written in scripture that he will put his angels charge over you? They will guard you on their wings and they will insist that you don't dash your foot against a stone. Satan negotiating. And then finally, the Bible says he took him into, not on top, into an exceeding high mountain and showed him the glories of the world from that mountain. That mountain was not just a physical mountain. He took him into a sphere and a realm and showed him all the captains of industry, business, and said, all these people, I place them there. I'm like a godfather. The keys is here with me. Just bow down to me. Why go through the rigor of the cross? Why add three and a half years of pain and misery, preaching and doing evangelism, recruiting stubborn disciples who will probably betray you tomorrow, going through the cross, feeding the 5,000? Let me save you that journey. Just bow to me. This is what you want to collect. Bow to me. And Jesus said, depart from me. And he left him. I can imagine what happened when he met him again in hell. Satan, three years ago we met. Now I'm with you. Give me the keys. Now I can collect the keys legally. You offered me the keys. But if I received it, there would not be blood. There would not be death. There would not be the cross. I couldn't have died as a curse. Because the mosaic, the, the, the mosaic law says that it has to be death on a tree to make you a curse. So if he died but not on a tree. There's no way he would have become sin for us. The Bible says, for it is written, cursed is he that hanged on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham, justification by faith, will come upon us, the Gentiles, to the end that we may receive the promise of the Spirit by faith. We must learn to wait. Nigerians, we must learn to wait. God is a God that can bless people, but let's be careful with our idea of sharp, sharp. Many people have been destroyed today. Do you know that when you rush, while you are suffering the consequence of rushing, someone who is following process will still come and pass you. While you are there, managing the pain of rushing can be destructive. It is a, it is a, a greater time waster. We will wait. For in his presence there's fullness of joy and our strength shall be restored as we wait upon the Lord. Now look up, please.
place. What has God told you from scripture? Have you meditated upon it? Have you prayed? Have you confessed it with faith in your heart? Are we together? Have you obtained grace to walk in keeping with the conditions that make for that manifestation? Obedience is very powerful. If yes, have you given thanks in advance, knowing that God is not a man that you should lie, nor the son of man that you should repent, and haven't done all, are you standing patiently waiting? Patiently waiting. Patiently waiting. All the days of my appointed time, he said, I will wait until my change comes. All the days of my appointed time, I will wait until my child comes, until my land comes, until my influence comes. The Bible says, and John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing. Let me speak to someone. Listen to me. There is always a season of appearing for anyone. Do you know if you force a door to open, even if it's not time, it will open. But if that door opens, it can kill you. Have you seen people try to pluck mango from a tree? We're wrapping up. When it is not time. When that mango is not ripe. See the effort it takes. You can stone and hit someone's car and go to police station simply because you were not patient for sometimes one more month. It's difficult to pluck a fruit that is not yet ripe. The effort. But how many of you have mangoes around you? When it is time, in the night you think it's raining. <laughs> everything is coming down and you wake up in the morning to prepare blessings that's what happens when seasons come god is speaking to someone faith is not foolishness i must balance this we live in a generation that prides itself in excessive hurry and rush i need to show people that i'm the youngest millionaire I need to show people that I'm the most vibrant man of God at 15. I need to do this. I need to buy the best car. Sometimes not every open door is anointed. You have to be discerning. When Satan wants to destroy you, sometimes he can give you visa. And off you go out of the will of God into perdition. We must sustain the maturity and the discernment to discern doors and discern opportunities. Can we pray this morning? Please rise up on your feet. Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.